If you want a perfect game to play while at work, then Prosperous Universe is definitely a game you should try. Imagine a spreadsheet simulator set in space, where everything takes real-life hours or days to be done. At the beginning, your progress is slow, your money is limited, and if you want to succeed, you have to trade with other players in the ever-changing market. If your boss walks in on you while you're playing this in the office, he's gonna be like, oh, this dude's spreadsheet game is on the next level, and the next day, he's gonna give you a raise. Thank you, Prosperous Universe. If you're a busy person, with a job, with kids to take care of, with spouse aggro to shrug off and with barely any time to ever game, then Prosperous Universe will make you happy. You only really need to log in once or twice a day, send a ship to a market, check your production line is working properly, and order some water for your worker force, and you're good. Unlike pretty much every MMO out there, Prosperous Universe does not force you to play 24-7 to succeed, but I still somehow managed to log over 60 hours in the last month, so yeah, it's, it's pretty addictive. And most importantly, it's free to play. Well, there are a couple of limitations if you're using the free license, you can succeed and prosper on the market without ever having to spend a cent of your hard-earned real-life money. Now, you've seen some spreadsheet-looking footage, but you still have no idea how this game actually plays. So, allow me to take you on a one lunch journey of my experience playing Prosperous Universe. When you first begin your space stonks empire, you get to choose your starting profession. I decided to become a victor, focusing on production of food and water, because no matter how far humanity has spread amongst the stars, we still need to eat. So I thought that's gonna be a steady profession that's always gonna make me money. Then you get to choose one of the four factions, and I decided to go with Inciter Cooperative, because they are known as the breadbasket of the universe, having their HQ on Hortus Prometer planet, which has an abundance of water and fertile soil, so a perfect place for me to settle and begin farming. I named my company KZ Germline, and that's how it began. A short tutorial helped me establish my base. I built two pioneer habitats for my workers, a rig to extract water, a farmstead to grow the crops and a food processor to process those crops into rations. I queued up some water to be extracted, some rations to be made and beans, grains and fruits to be grown. When I returned a couple of hours later, I noticed I received three contracts from my faction. One to deliver a shipment to another planet, one to procure materials and one to explore a certain planet. I decided to deliver a shipment for which they promised me 4000 ICA, which was the currency in this part of the universe, and some reputation gains. I sent my ship into the vast void, on a journey that would take almost 12 real life hours into one direction, and burn more fuel than what I would get paid for the whole thing. But you see, I didn't do the math, I was just happy to be able to do something. The next day my ship has arrived, so I fulfilled the delivery and happily cashed in on my reward before sending it back on another lengthy journey. Meanwhile, I got another shipment contract and sent my second ship on an 18 hour journey, which I completed the next day. At this point, I produced some rations and drinkable water, which I stored at a warehouse I rented on Hortus Station, above my home planet, which was also the home of the main commodity exchange in the Inzitor controlled space. I sold my goods soon after, earning peanuts, but I was happy to accomplish my first proper trade. And so it continued for the first week of my journey. I produced small amounts of goods I then sold to other players at the commodity exchange or CX as it's known. And I kept on sending my ships on expensive shipping and exploration contracts that mostly drained my money. There were some exciting moments in between as well. I voted for an agriculture campaign on Prometer, which promised to boost all agriculture outputs by 25%, so that sounded great. I also spent half of my money to buy construction materials and pre fabs to build my second farmstead, which doubled my crop production. Also traded on Prometor's local market for the first time, buying some padded work overalls, a luxury work gear consumed daily by my workforce, which increased the base's productivity by a whopping 10%. At the start of my second week, I accepted it was time to do some math. I calculated which crops would be the best to grow for continuous production of rations, and I spent most of my money to buy enough resources to build another pioneer habitat, and my third farmstead. Now I could grow beans, fruits and maize at the same time, and then turn them into delicious rations. At the same time, I also convinced my girlfriend to play with me. I wanted to see how it looks if you start with any other profession, and I suggested she should start as a carbon farmer, because the prices of carbon were quite high at that point. 
She built two farmsteads to grow hydrocarbon plants and an incinerator to burn them into pure carbon which she could then sell. We also established a corporation together called Germline Obvious, but were disappointed we couldn't trade directly to each other because she was playing on the free license. While she checked on her carbon farms once a day, I continued to plot how to further my own company. By now I completely abandoned shipment and exploration missions, because they were just not worth it. I started doing some procurement missions because I just had to buy certain goods and deliver them to Prometor, and since my ships were already flying to the CX on a daily basis, no extra fuel was wasted. I also built a second food processor to double my rations production and with a steady source of fresh produce, those were starting to stockpile nicely. An agriculture expert arrived at my base soon after, reducing the 2 hour growth period of beans by a whole 10 minutes, which was a huge bonus. By the end of week 2, I built another food processor, gained a new resource extraction expert and started selling rations in stacks of 100 at the local market. Because I realized people were ready to pay a bit extra just so they didn't need to Fly to the CX. My partner in crime sold her first shipment of carbon and built an extra incinerator, which skyrocketed her carbon production from 4 to 8 a day. Of course, I wanted to expand even more, but I was always out of money because I spent it instantly as it arrived. I even posted some fresh produce directly on the CX in hopes it sold overnight to help raise money for even more farmstead buildings. But unfortunately, my rations were undercut severely and prices dropped by a decent amount over a couple of days. I could have waited, but I needed money, so I queued up 200 rations on the local market and got really lucky when they sold for 15,000 overnight. Combined with my savings, I now had enough money for not one, but two farmsteads. I first built a new pioneer habitat and then brought my farmstead numbers up to 5 in total. At this point, I started exploring what my next logical step should be. You see, rations feed the simplest of workers, the pioneers. But many industries employ settlers, technicians, engineers and so on. People who require more delicious meals. So those flavored instant meals were my next goal, because on average, they sold for 1.5 thousand each, while rations sold for 75 each. You see, quite a big difference. But their production wasn't as simple. They were made by combining rations with spicy herbs. I had rations, and I could grow herbs myself, but there was a catch. To grow those herbs, I needed DDT, plant agent chemicals, which cost over 3,000 each in the market. I bought 5 of them for 17,000 after calculating that those 5 will then turn into 20 herbs, which will then turn into 40 flavored instant meals that I could sell for at least 60,000. A decent profit. My girlfriend in the meantime still slowly chugged along with her carbon farming and built another pioneer habitat and two more incinerators doubling her production again. At this point we made a plan that she's gonna save up some money to help me scale first, and then with the extra money I'm gonna make from producing meals, I'm gonna help her advance. A perfect plan, of course, planned by me. Of course, I was impatient, and instead of waiting to turn the herbs into meals, I went to sell a batch of them at the CX and spent all of my money on another habitat and my sixth farmstead. My ideology was always that I need to spend money to make money, but patience unfortunately wasn't my strong suit. At the start of week 4, I finally had my first batch of flavored instant meals. Whole 8 of them. But those 8 sold for 12,000 and I bought a new batch of DDT plant agent with that money. At this point my girlfriend was on pro license as well, and we started using our corporation like it was meant to be used, to train in between us so we could eventually supply each other, both focusing on certain parts of the production chain. But for now it was mostly her helping me buy enough prefabs to build two more food processors and another habitat to speed up the meal production. But now we're slowly coming to the end of my month long experience. I sold some extra meals in between because I noticed the price has gone up a bit, and that gave me my sixth food processor. I finally built my second rig as well to produce more water without the need to buy it too often. I now had 6 farmsteads, 6 food processors and 2 rigs. In total, 600 pioneers were employed at my little base. My crowning achievement came at the end of week 4. I was patient. I didn't sell herbs early. I didn't sell my meals one at a time. No. I waited until the whole batch was completed and sold 62 of them for a juicy 105,000 at the CX. Still peanuts for players who've been playing for months or years, but for me, it was a glorious achievement. Of course, I instantly spent 35,000 of that money to buy more DDT, but with the rest, I'm planning to help my girlfriend scale up some more, so she can start producing other things, not just carbon. 
I have to say, I really enjoyed playing Prosperous Universe, and I will continue for the foreseeable future. I'm excited to see new things devs will add to the game and how it's gonna evolve. It is a very unique game, and definitely not for everyone, but if you like the idea of building an empire via peaceful means that only require a bit of your time every day, then give it a try and you won't regret it. Of course, not everything is peachy in this universe, no matter how prosperous it might be. Now let's keep in mind the game is still in early access, so things can and will change. I think right now it is too slow at the start to keep new players interested and keep them entertained long enough that they get further in when things start to speed up. I also think it's not the most user-friendly game, but luckily those users who've been playing for a long time are very friendly in the in-game chat or on official Discord and are ready to help you whenever you have a question. There is also a question what license to get when you start playing. With free license you can do pretty much everything, but not quite. You can't trade at local markets and planets, which is a bit of an issue, because they're great places to trade. You also can't trade directly with custom contracts between players, even if you're together in a corporation. Understand why that's the case, no one wants to see someone creating 100 accounts using a VPN to funnel themselves unlimited money the spiffing Brit way. But it can be frustrating to not have access to some of the things that make the game feel more complete. Of course, you can get the basic account, which is free after you paid for at least one month of Pro. At that point, you can accept contracts but can't post them, so at least it makes you a very useful part in a corporation. I would advise you get a free license first and give it a try to see how it works. There's a link in the description that you can follow and check it out. And if you really enjoy it, then consider spending some money on it. And if you decide to start somewhere around Hordus Promise, let me know on Discord and let's play together, but only if you subscribe now.